Polycystic liver disease is a condition of the liver that is characterized by a large number of cysts on the liver as shown on this cartoon over here. A cyst is a bag full of fluid and each cyst has a lining of epithelial cells which differentiates it from other forms of cysts. In the great majority of the patients this is a genetic condition passed from parent to child and the risk is 50% for each generation. The effects are more severe in females and tend to increase over time. In terms of symptoms, the great majority may not cause any symptoms at all. However, the symptoms are due to the sheer size, which increase the entire size of the liver, sometimes by several fold. And it is this pressure up on the diaphragm, as well as across, that may cause significant pain, breathlessness. And if the cyst is causing pressure on the stomach, the patients will have reflux and may feel full very quickly after eating anything at all and sometimes vomiting. These cysts may also cause pressure on the blood vessel, the portal vein that brings blood from the gut to the liver to obstruct over time, thus leading to back pressure and the presence of varices which are dilated tortuous, tortuous veins at risk of bleeding around the gullet and other places, as well as any large spleen. Rarely the cysts may cause pressure on the inferior vena cava which channels blood back from the abdomen and the lower limbs back towards the heart causes lethargy, collection of fluid in the tummy and swelling of the feet. Complications may sometimes occur that include bleeding in the cyst, infection leading to abscess formation and sometimes rupture of the larger cysts causing abdominal pain. This genetic condition may also affect other organs, predominantly the kidneys which also develop cysts, pancreas and blood vessels such as the artery in the brain which very rarely may lead to a weakness called an aneurysm or the aorta itself. There are other effects which are not as important. The diagnosis is quite straightforward. The, cl the clinicians should obtain a history about the parents. Ultrasound, CT and MRI scan are usually enough to have an understanding of the cysts, their distribution and their effects on the body. Luckily, the liver function remains normal despite a large number of cysts in the liver. So a treatment, it is important that patients with polycystic liver disease are treated in centers that have experience in treating this condition and have a surgical team that fully understand and appreciate it because the normal architecture of the liver is completely disrupted by these cysts. Patients without symptoms do not need any treatment and those with symptoms ought to be treated according to the severity of their symptoms. Hence for cysts causing problems which are not too large then ultrasound guided aspiration and replacement with an irritant called a sclerosin can be used but generally is not very effective. Surgery has been deployed with good effect, however, recurrences and recurrent symptoms may occur in a fair number of patients. In terms of surgery, cyst fenestration is a safe option which aims to deroof the cyst and drain all of the contents out, thus reducing the volume of the liver and the pressure effects. Liver resection is deployed if the majority of the cysts are in the single lobe of the liver, then a liver resection may be planned that aims to remove that part of the liver to gain longer term benefit. But I must reiterate, this ought to be performed by experienced surgeons. Finally, when the cysts are distributed on both sides of the liver and there is no other option, then a liver transplantation is a reasonable option, but it comes with its own risks and benefits. Sometimes the liver transplant is combined with a kidney transplant if the patient has affliction of both these organs and patients manifest kidney failure. Medication to slow down the disease or indeed to reverse it have not been very effective. So metastatin is a naturally occurring hormone and the longer acting versions have been deployed in polycystic disease with mixed results, some reporting benefit in slowing the disease down or indeed in slightly reversing it. Some newer agents have shown promise but further research is awaited. In particular, Sirolimus has shown a slight decrease in the cyst size over a period of time, but confirmatory studies are required. And yet again, these drugs have associated risks and complications. This completes a brief overview of this condition. If you